Hello, I'm Valentin Mandace from Historic Houses of Romania, Casa de Epoca, and I'd like to make a comparison between a, a Bucharest town house, a historic one, and uh, one from the Saxon area of Transylvania, and to see which is better to buy. If you are uh, into the lookout for a historic house in Romania, which is better value for money, and also much better value from a historic point of view, identity point of view, and so on and so forth. Uh, people who are following my Facebook page, History of Romania Casa de Epoca, my blog, and coming on my tours and courses, are people looking uh, for these things. Identity in architecture, history, symbolism, all of these kind of meanings, and uh, load, spiritual and historical load into a uh, house, historic house. It's very different. Uh, uh, the, my public is very different from the one, the so-called investors in real estate, usual, the usual type which comes in Romania. So, let's see the houses first. Uh, I have a, a few houses I want to show you, but uh, we'll uh, center the discussion on two houses first. This one is from Bucharest and we'll speak mostly about uh, houses which are pretty similar in size and uh, age. Uh, when I say pretty, it's a large degree of variation, but nevertheless, it's an overlap there. This is a little Paris style house, uh, late 1900, early 1900, up until the Great War in Bucharest. And this one is a Saxon house in one of the more prominent villages of Saxon Transylvania, Birtan. The house dates from sometimes early uh, towards mid 19th century, so about one century, roughly one century older than the Bucharest one. Now let's look at the context of these two houses. One is in a very busy, bustling and uh, prosperous market of Bucharest, the Little Paris one. Bucharest is the sixth largest town of the European Union, after London, Paris, uh, Rome, Madrid, Berlin, comes Bucharest, and after Brexit, it's going to be the fifth, fifth largest town of the European Union, so very important from that point of view. It's a town which is still growing and very dynamic. And uh, Saxon Transylvania, again, it's an up-and-coming area. Uh, it's uh, extremely picturesque from uh, an environment point of view, hills, rolling hills, lots of forest, wildlife, organic farming, and the largest uh, uh, rural medieval uh, architectural reservation of Europe. Architecture, uh, uh, an architecture similar with the ones in Western and Central Europe. In Bucharest, in a house like this, you have a, a town which has infrastructure, water, running water, canal, electricity, an airport is nearby, but you have the problems of a large metropolis which is not very well developed and very much engulfed in corruption. So the traffic is very busy, you can miss your airplane because the traffic, lots of corruption again, if you want to renovate or restore this house. In Saxon Transylvania, again, you have the usual Romanian corruption and things uh, moving slowly because of the legislation, but it's a different work ethic here, uh, very different from the ones from the Bucharest. Bucharest in the former Ottoman lands of Romania, this one is the former Habsburg lands, and they come with a different way of life and uh, ideology in a way. These people are more serious in Transylvania, they keep their word mostly much better than the one in the south. south. They do quality work. And also, the infrastructure is getting better. The roads, the airports are nearby in Trgumoresh or Sibiu. One is uh, planned for Brasov. And the water canal, again, it's uh, being developed and is running very well in many villages. In a place like Birtan, for example, as we have here. Now let's see the houses again in more detail. The Little Paris style one, 1900 in Bucharest. This one is from uh, Batista area, very central. Um, it's a house 
built uh, with uh, building technology which is very simple mm, brick with lime mortar not much brick it's just uh, two uh, verti uh, bricks next to each other that the thickness of the walls not much uh, resistance structure regarding um, uh, steel beams is sometimes you find here wood beams uh, sustaining the structure small cellar very small loft uh, the habitation area is something between 70 80 square meters up to 150 really small is over that uh, surface with a very small garden around again between 80 and 200 300 square meters that is the typical little Paris town uh, uh, house for Bucharest. What about a Saxon house? Something like this or This one is average towards the larger ones, let's put it that way. The uh, usual uh, living surface is um, about 200-300 uh, square meters. More than that is not unusual, up to 500 square meters. There are many other buildings around. It's a f small farm, a house like this. It's got a barn, scullery, uh, it's got uh, a summer kitchen, and many other small big buildings around. A large cellar, uh, very big loft, which again can be developed, and it's uh, built from sturdy materials. Quite often, at the base, is rock, stone, and then high quality uh, brick very thick walls in the wood used is high quality oak so absolutely excellent from that point of view what about the surfaces around i said that in the other uh, example the garden would be about 150 up to 300 square meters this one you can you easily have land up to 3000 4000 square meters even 500 5000 square meters anything between 1500 and 5000 square meters in between them what about the price for a house like this in Bucharest central and semi-central Bucharest as I said we are here in the Ottoman area of Bucharest the oriental traditions you are like in a Arabic souk when you do the negotiation they come with a price initial that, that you like even 1 million euro, they may, I may ask, very often 500,000 euro. I can get it down to about 300, 250,000 euro. If you are very lucky, good in negotiation with the house in a very bad state, about 200,000 euro. What about this one? The prices hover depending on the size of the house, its state of repair, anything between 15,000 and 40,000, 45,000. Uh, euro this one it might be about 30,000 euro what I see here So it's about 10 percent from this one You might say yes, it's about location location location. This one is in the sixth soon to be the fifth largest town of Europe uh, the Up and coming town, but what does this justifying the price differential of 10 times this one is basically 10 between seven and ten times cheaper than this one this one it's about in terms of uh, living surface a quarter even less than this one land it's about ten times smaller than this one infrastructure is roughly okay over here infrastructure is okay or you can uh, uh, is going to be fixed uh, to this kind of European Union investments and the local people sizing the opportunities and they put running water, electricity and everything uh, more or less like in, in Bucharest. Uh, here you have a very busy traffic, you can barely move your car 100 meters going to work, you can easily miss your airplane even if you go by taxi or Uber over here you can easily go to Sibiu or to Gomorrah airport without delay. Roads terrible, 
but their roads roads much less busy over here and much nicer with much nicer nature around so in my opinion the price differential about 10 times more in Bucharest than over here is not justified it should be about a quarter maybe one third that's my opinion but not about 10 between 7 and 10 times lower for the Saxon houses conclusion the Saxon houses houses a much better value for money and uh, it will uh, increase its value because this house can be much easier restored than this one the workforce in Bucharest is very expensive European Union level regarding uh, uh, what you have to pay for builders and materials not speaking of the builders are terrible over here you use village workforce uh, local craftsmen you can use uh, plenty of materials from all other houses which are demolished or from the uh, they are organizations doing uh, uh, like tiles or uh, woodwork in the old manner and uh, it's going to be more professional and cheaper than this one over here so you have also to add the renovation restoration costs so this one it's a winner that's my opinion than the Bucharest one Bucharest you are like in an oriental souk you are can easily cheated and uh, you can end up in tears but over here it's a much lower investment the degree of risk is lower and this area is up and coming too like Bucharest Prince Charles for example put it on the map on the cultural map of the world again let's see some other houses around and make a, a comparison between them again little Paris style house look usually we have this kind of decrepit looking uh, many people did very uncouth uh, renovations like plastic windows absolutely terrible things and then let's look at another at the Saxon house for example like this one again beer town this one is from 1834 absolutely majestic and easily can be brought to its former glory it's just waiting for someone to save it again a Bucharest townhouse not much to write home about it but again it will at least 200,000 euro to spend on it what about this little small house in a place called uh, I have here the name Beschendorf. Absolutely beautiful. This is a small Saxon house. This one probably <laughs> it's about 10,000, 15,000 euro. Again, easily brought to its former glory. What about this one from Bucharest? Little Peristine house. Absolutely terrible. It's very central. And again, a lot of money for it. Uh, another Saxon house this one is from Kreisch such a nice orchard and vineyard nearby a hill nearby absolutely beautiful another little Perry style house this one is a bit better but again much less to write home about than the Saxon ones or this one from Mark Krog, Wallenkraft, the beauty in Saxon Transylvania. So, it's a kind of pertinent analysis and uh, to give you food for thought. So, in this case, the winning match between Bucharest and Saxon Transylvania, the Saxon Transylvania, it's winning clearly. Thank you. I hope that you liked this podcast and we'll see each other as soon as possible. Bye-bye.